Welcome back to the Global ITAM Summit, year three. This is episode two of our panel. Uh, if you saw our posters and David Foxen's not on it, it's because he had laptop issues the day we're recording this. And so one question for our four esteemed guests, Craig Garenti, Alexander Golev, Pam Fulmer, Rory Canavan. Here's your question. We'll start with you, Craig. What is the one current event in your area that is shaping the, the Oracle world licensing? I think for Oracle customers, it's Oracle's emphasis these days on Java licensing. Yeah. So, um, you know, obviously Oracle acquired Java through their Sun acquisition many years ago, and they really sat on monetizing that part of it for, for several years. Uh, they made some changes a couple of years ago to turn it from a free product to a paid subscription. And they have really hit the accelerator here. And you know, with the sales teams pushing clients uh, to give them information, and they've sort of, we say, combined the worst of the worst of Oracle behavior. So they've, they've taken this free product, now they charge for it, and now they've added Oracle's virtualization mess to it. So now they want you to license Java for everything. So they're trying to push customers yeah. into these really expensive Java ULAs. And um, often uh, we're seeing customers unable to purchase Java because Oracle won't sell it to them unless they give them certain information which customers don't want to give. So uh, I think that's going to, um, they're, they're really butting heads these days, customers in Oracle and, and something's got to give on that. Uh, but I expect that pressure to continue. I would expect that Oracle is probably generating one, $2 billion a year off of Java. So I don't see why they would stop unless someone makes them stop. What a great acquisition of Sun Microsystems, huh? <laughs> and I, they paid nothing for Java, right? right? When you think about that acquisition and you know they, they wanted uh, the, the hardware for uh, Exadata and all of that and, and Java was sort of an afterthought. And, and now Java's probably paid for that acquisition by itself multiple times. Wow. And, you know, Java's just not coffee anymore. And uh, it is amazing how the footprint of Java has increased over that time as well, at least in my perspective. We had one client, these are not my words, a uh, really big client. They called Java the cockroach of the internet. It's just <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> Yeah, and, and everybody uses it and it's everywhere and it's easy to sort of get out of line. The, the good news here, unlike database, because Oracle's moving to subscription, even if you have to give Oracle some money for a couple of years, it's not like database where you can't rip it out because it's running some app. You can take out Oracle Java and put in a different version of Java. It's not that much effort. Um, so what's happening is customers are just getting caught by surprise and uh, that's causing a problem, but they're able to fix it later. So it's, it's not like database, but it is causing major headaches and opportunities for Oracle reps. And Oracle reps love opportunities. And headaches. Yes. Your problem, my, my solution. Exactly. So, Alexander, what's the current event in the Microsoft licensing area? Good timing. Uh, it's called new commerce experience. It's happening right now. So Microsoft, uh, they have various licensing program. They have traditional licensing program. Almost every every organization I deal with has an enterprise agreement, almost everyone. And uh, you probably have heard, especially if you're in the ITAM world, and interestingly enough, uh, end clients don't really understand the difference. There's a new uh, licensing program, which is called CSP, Cloud Solution Program, Cloud Solution Partner, there are various ways to read that acronym anyway. And it's been with us for about three to four years, I think. But what Microsoft did right now is they've reshaped CSP inside it. And they brought in this new commerce experience. And it's not only about the increasing of the, uh, you know, the, the, the increased price of the Office 365 products. I'm not even talking about that. The whole commercial model is changing. And there's a lot of uproar from uh, clients because CSP was sold as a flexible program where you buy licenses today, you buy a thousand licenses tomorrow, you need only 500. So you cancel 500, fine. No, Microsoft lets you do that. With the new commerce experience, that ability is taken away. You only have 72 hours. You made a mistake, cancel it. You forgot to, uh, to do that. After 72 hours, you are committed for a year. You're committed for a year. You still want monthly licenses? 
you can still buy them, but there's a 20% premium. So imagine if you build the entire uh, operating model around that flexibility, now you need to rethink it or pay 20% more plus on top of or up to 45% increase on, Office, on, on certain Office 365 products. So that's been delayed until 15th of, Mar 15th of March, but that is coming, that is inevitable, and there's no way around it. The, the other problem with this entire new comics experience is that now Microsoft uh, is approaching clients over 2,400 seats, sometimes less than that. I've just talked to a client that has only 1,900 seats. To sell them, uh, licenses directly, which is which is called enterprise motion now through CSP. So uh, details aside, I've got a video on my channel explaining why it's dangerous to switch to from EA to CSP without thinking and planning. It's it's really you you you, you can hurt yourself if you do that. Uh, all the details aside, we have a very interesting situation when Microsoft has firstly created a, an entire network of CSP partners. That is competing with LSPs, with the, with the large resellers. That was the you know, previous infrastructure that they relied upon. Now, Microsoft is another competitor. And you can see it, you can see it kind of uh, uh, both sides of this medal. You know, from, from one point of view, it's a bit of a mess. From the other side, you could think, what if I clash them and, and try and squeeze as much uh, value out of that? In negotiation in the negotiation process what why don't i uh, uh put an lsp a csp and microsoft themselves against play against each other how that's gonna look like so uh yes new commerce experience is a big big shift and unfortunately and clients are not familiar with it and why do i know that is because i have a youtube channel and i have my my articles nobody's searching for it and those who are searching, their Microsoft partners, that resell it. And, and that worries me because then clients are unaware of, of these changes. And when they become aware, it's usually too late. Yep, I'm with you. And Microsoft knows what they're doing, just like Oracle. Pam, what's, Absolutely. The, one, Pam, what's the one current event in your area that's kind of shaping it? Well, I, I agree with Craig that Java, Oracle and Java, I mean, this week alone, I think I got three or four phone calls on it and it, it started last year, but it's really picking up. And, you know, not only do companies have to figure out, you know, their current license, licensing and what they need going forward, but Oracle seeking the past use. So basically, you know, since 2019, when this all came around, Oracle has been sitting there waiting patiently and now they're starting to unfurl their strategy. So, but, you know, so I think that that's true. Um, but the point that I had mentioned in our other conversation was that I think the customers are starting to fight back. And recently, the Senate Judiciary Committee passed a tech antitrust bill. And although that particular bill doesn't really focus on the enterprise software, you know, overreaching publishers um, uh, out there, um, it does mention, you know, in the report, cloud, okay? So that is going to get more and more attention. And I think that you're going to see uh, companies start to lobby Congress to do something about some of the overreaches by these big software publishers. And so that's a trend that's happening as we speak. And I think you're going to see that more and more in the future. That will be wild for me, how the power shifts, because... I don't think any of us in the U.S. really have faith in like the judicial system to make swift decisions. I don't want to put that on Pam and Craig, <laughs> but I I just see it drawn out and a lot of mud being thrown and all that other stuff over time. That's that's kind of whenever I've seen these before happen. Right. And so I would say just a little shout out. There's an organization that is um, working here in the U.S. and Europe called uh, Fair Software Licensing. And although they focus a lot on the cloud, they also just focus on fair software licensing. So if you have, if you're a company that's had an issue with Oracle or Microfocus or Quest or one of the other ones, um, that is uh, a organization you should consider uh, contacting and talking to confidentially. All right, Rory, you and your black hat saved for last. 
what is the one area in uh, or event in the SAM world that's shaping the area? Software asset management. Um, from its its uh, the one that I've chosen is a uh, tools related. So it's the it's the rise and rise of ServiceNow. Hmm. Um, we're seeing increasingly a lot of organizations who have bought the service management solution um, off ServiceNow then see the um, how attractive or or the value add potentially of turning on SAM Pro within the same um, technical umbrella. Um, but where where that might be a sort of, you know, an insert of a license and a very quick sort of flick of a switch to, to get SAM Pro up and running. I am being sort of facetious there. There's a lot more to it. Um, what you have on the left-hand side, if you will, is, is a CMDB. And you want your CMDB to be, to be the golden source of truth in respect of how your IT state actually looks from a services point of view and where all your configuration items line up of those configuration items, of course, you have your software. Your software, of course, works off an IT asset lifecycle. So your SAM Pro solution will generate compliance reports, which is fair enough, that's a given. But if you want your IT asset lifecycle data to impact your CMDB, then you need to build the workflows or what we call in the in the non-service now world processes to interact with your CMDB. Um, so increasingly, uh, I'm getting a lot of attention around what could you do for us? How can you help us in regards to getting our service now installation to be the the golden source of truth, the single pane of glass, if you will, that we want it to be? Yep. And so they use CMDB and uh, service now. Uh, asset, Sam and Ham use the, the same discovery. And one of the things I've seen for you, you guys are the experts, is that the organizations put in the service down tool, but they don't understand the licensing. They think just putting in the tool is going to make it all their problems go away. And when you go look at the service now documentation, it's at a really high level in the organization struggle. The tools implemented, but how do I how do I put my entitlements in? How do I understand my licensing position? Does that seem reasonable? Yeah, it does. And it's it's a shame too, because and it's like any SAM tool uh, that you install, whether it's SAM Pro or whether it is, um, you know, A and other, it will spit out data, but it is that old acronym too, garbage in, garbage out. So you've got to make sure that the, the data follows the life cycle. So you get an accurate reflection of what your compliance position actually is. And, and that's the hard yards that don't come out of the box with service now, unfortunately. It is good to see, hear a European using the term yards instead of meters, but that's a different topic. <laughs> so as we close, I want to give each of you all a chance to tell everybody your company, your specialty, how people can get a hold of you. Is that all right? And we'll go in the same order. Craig, do you mind leading us off? Sure thing. Uh, Palisade Compliance, uh, we help our com our clients with their Oracle licensing and contracting and compliance challenges. Um, we've got some exciting things that are coming out in, uh, in May. So you asked what is the most exciting thing in your field, and I went to Oracle. But really, for me, it's about what, what Palisade is doing this year. So uh, stay tuned for that. We've got some tools that are rolling out that's going to uh, really help customers monitor their Oracle usage. So I'm really excited about that. That's awesome. Thank you, Craig, for sharing your knowledge with us. Alexander. Yes, yeah, so I work uh, for some expert, which is which is a partnership, and we specialize in all things Microsoft, predominantly uh, what we call uh, financial strategic financial planning for licensing and cloud around Microsoft. So all things considered around licenses, migration to the cloud, how to save money whilst migrating and, and transforming your business. That is what we do. And Alexander's got a very robust YouTube channel. I want to make sure I, I promote that for you. Thank you. Yeah, that's someexpert.tv. All right. And so I wanted to make sure I throw that out. Pam, how about you? Sure. I'm uh, an attorney and managing partner at Tactical Law Group, LLP. Um, we're a boutique law firm in the San Francisco Bay Area, and we specialize in uh, IP licensing disputes and helping our clients get out from under audits and uh, 
and get back to doing what they want to do, which is focus on their business. Rory, you and your black cat for last. Thanks very much, Jeffrey. Yeah, so um, we focus on at Sam Charter on frameworks um, and um, processes, workflows, getting those right for the organization. Uh, a side spin off uh, in line with my business partner, Kylie Fowler, we recently completed a, a body of work to align to ISO 19770-1, which is the IT asset management standard for, um, um, for ISO. So best practice, that's where you go. Um, and we've used that as core collateral for um, ITAM Accelerate, which is a, a training business that we have online now as well. So that's, that's just getting legs now. Um, if you want that sort of learning and education experience beyond the foundation death by PowerPoint experience that you get from a lot of providers, come and see us. It's interactive. You will learn. Gotcha. So I thank you all for your uh, sharing your knowledge with us. And those of you in the listening will have one-on-one -on -one conversations with each of these guests plus others. And so stay tuned. Thank you all for your sharing your knowledge and your time with us and uh, helping all of us learn about your specific areas. Thank you, Thank you Jeffrey. Have, Thank a you. Have a great day. Uh, bye. Yeah.